Hi, my name is Erin Hodson, and I'm an extension entomologist for Iowa State University. And today we're talking about soybean aphid management. A soybean aphid is our primary insect pest in Iowa, meaning it's a persistent pest. You can find it every year, and uh, it has the potential to cause yield loss up to 40% if left unmanaged. Aphids are small insects, about a millimeter in size. They're pear-shaped, limey green, and they prefer to feed on the undersides of soybean leaves. In Iowa, generally, it's unlikely that you would find them during the vegetative growth stage, but more likely to find them after bloom. So in Iowa, that's you know early to mid-July on, you'd find them. Initially, soybean aphids can be really patchy and erratic in these little hot spots, and so my recommendation is to just go around a field, check a few different, different spots to see if you see them. And again, checking the undersides of the leaves. They prefer the newest growing trifoliates, so always check the smallest trifoliates. Uh, as the season progresses, sometimes they can form a uniform colonization where almost every plant is infested. Oh, when it gets really bad, you can find aphids all over the leaves, colonizing the stems and the petioles. Uh, they form a lot of cast skins as they molt and develop, so you're going to see not only the aphids, but the cast skins. And they can produce a lot of honeydew, which is a sugary, rich excrement that covers above ground plant parts. And it's sticky, it's shiny, and it's a big mess. Yeah, the, the primary way that we've been managing soybean aphid is through foliar insecticides. A well-timed treatment can protect yield, so I encourage regular scouting and applications made when you reach the threshold of 250 aphids per plant. There's also some new developing tactics that are really encouraging that include host plant resistance. This is where naturally occurring germplasm is in, incorporated into the soybean genetics and aphids that feed on the host plant resistant varieties don't live as long or produce as many offspring. The host plant resistance is occurring in the variety throughout the entire life of the soybean plant, so it's always going to be there, which is great because we never really know when aphids are going to show up. Also, insecticides that we use in soybean are considered broad spectrum, so it's going to kill the aphid, but also kill non-targets, beneficials, and pollinators as well. So it just reduces the overall risk of uh, insects in the environment. In the past couple years, there have been positive detections of pyrethroid resistant soybean aphids, particularly in northwestern Iowa and along su uh, southern Minnesota. And so it's something to be aware that's an emerging issue in Iowa is that pyrethroids are not a silver bullet like they used to be. And so my recommendation is to use all insecticides with caution, but especially when using pyrethroids for soybean aphid, is to come back into that field three days after the application and just make sure that the aphids are at an acceptable level, basically a high knockdown. You can find information about soybean aphid in a lot of places. You can follow me on Twitter. There's a couple new publications that have come out this year, including a revised field guide that reviews the biology, management, insecticide options, and also talks about pyrethroid resistance. And then I'm also a co-author of a regional publication that goes a little bit more into depth about pyrethroid resistance, and you can find those at our Iowa State Extension Store. But when you see them built up like this on the stem, you know it's a really crowded situation. That's where they don't want to feed, but they will feed. So the leaves first. So seeing them on the stem is a bad sign.